So DCIS is a really fascinating disease because I think it's as much um, about the emotional reaction of somebody to a risk to a diagnosis of an increased risk of breast cancer um, as it is to breast cancer itself. Because we don't understand the natural history of DCIS, so what would happen if we left it alone and didn't do anything, it's really more of a risk factor diagnosis than it is a diagnosis of cancer. But when I tell women that they have a diagnosis of DCIS, their reaction is usually, oh, I have cancer, I need to make a decision about what to do, I need to treat it. And I think the medical um, community as a whole, just because we don't understand which DCIS will become invasive cancer, has really rallied around treating it as a cancer, and I think that's not really accurate. So um, as this field is changing, as we're understanding more about the factors that cause DCIS to become invasive, women are really left in the middle of trying to figure out whether it's a risk factor, whether it's a cancer, whether they need to be worried about it, uh, whether they should take a medication for it, or whether they should have surgery. And I think on one hand it's very confusing, but on the other I think it reflects the fact that we're moving away from a very uh, sort of tunnel vision about how we treat DCIS. We're really making the disease more of an opportunity to understand more about breast cancer prevention. And I think UCSF and other groups like us are trying to understand more about what causes cancer to develop rather than just treating it as, as invasive disease. So I think this reflects um, our increased knowledge in the field. And I think, unfortunately, it places an additional burden on the patient that they really need to educate themselves, understand the implications of the disease. But fortunately, there are lots of specialists who can help them through that decision-making process. And hopefully, with patients who are involved in clinical trials, we really can push the move field forward so that they will have options in the next 10 years that don't involve surgery. That's really where we want to go with this and ultimately understand the factors that cause some women to have breast cancer and other women not. I think it's a very essential question that we still don't have very good answers for. So for the last several years at UCSF, we've had a clinical trial of women who have estrogen receptor positive DCIS. So there are two main groups of DCIS, uh, and of all breast cancer actually. One group is sensitive to hormones and is called estrogen receptor positive. The other group is not sensitive to hormones, and so giving hormonal treatment wouldn't affect that group of women. So we take the group of women who have ER positive DCIS, and we know they're hormonally sensitive, so we treat them with a hormonal treatment. Uh, for premenopausal women, it's a medication called tamoxifen, which many of you have heard about probably. For postmenopausal women, it's a different class of medications called aromatase inhibitors. And the idea uh, behind this is to take women who uh, would need a large area of their breast removed for excision of their DCIS or who may even need a mastectomy for DCIS to try to treat them preoperatively for about three months, reduce the amount of disease that they have so that they either need less surgery uh, or they're able to avoid a mastectomy. So both of those options uh, would be a really good outcome for the study. I think ultimately we, what we want to do is by looking at what the patient's disease looks like before and after this kind of hormonal treatment, um, is to see which women respond to hormonal treatment alone so we can take surgery out of the treatment algorithm altogether. So what I've learned through this clinical trial that we're doing is that there are as many different kinds of women um, and many, as many different kinds of risk profiles uh, as there are patients in the world and everyone's going to come to this in a different way, particularly because even the medical community itself is not really decided on one way of thinking about the disease. It's very heterogeneous. We're learning new things all the time. Uh, but one thing I've been really excited about is that the women in the trial are leading the physicians to go to a different and a better place. And I think by virtue of being involved in this study, I've met so many women like this, some who are traveling from out of state. I actually have a patient who comes and sees me every six months from Canada they are really interested in finding an alternative to mastectomy. And I think when you're dealing with a disease where there's potentially no impact on mortality, I think women are getting it, even more than their physicians, that this is a really huge price to pay to reduce risk if you have other ways of doing close surveillance. And these women who are in the studies have made the decision that it's more important for them to be whole and to keep their breasts, to try to avoid invasive intervention for a disease that we don't even understand the implications of. 
So I think it's that these types of patients are really forcing the whole medical community forward, and they're really leading the way for us. And I think it's our job as, as clinicians, as clinical trialists, to follow the lead that the patients are taking, because I think women are, are ahead of us. Just as they led the way for lumpectomy, I think they're leading the way to non-interventional treatments for DCIS.